This is a tutorial on how to record the Windows desktop with um, FFmpeg. FFmpeg is open source software that uh, runs from the command line. It is a uh, video encoding software. Um, and what it does is it uses direct show to capture your screen and um, what you need you also need a um, direct show filter that is specifically designed to process the desktop and um, there are a couple of um, a couple of filters that I have used one is U screen capture and another is screen capture recorder and a couple of differences between those two um, U screen capture U screen capture is proprietary software part of the Unreal Media server and um, screen capture recorder is open source software it's released under multiple licenses um, you can contact the author to get information on on licensing and I'll post a link for for uh, these two these two filters um, also you screen capture to change its settings you have to do it in the registry and screen capture recorder has some batch files that get installed along with it that you can run from um, the start menu screen capture recorder by default will process um, 30 frames per second while you screen capture only does 10 frames per second which is pretty low so you have to um, if, if you want it higher than 10 frames per second with uh, FFmpeg, you have to s uh, specifically declare the, frame, the frames per second that you want to use. Um, if you run into issues with getting it to run or getting it to process at a higher frame rate, there's an option you can add to the registry uh, to change that. Um, I was running into problems with that, but I think the problem is I was just declaring the frame, the frame rate in the wrong spot. Um, but you can change the default to uh, whatever you want in the registry. Um, I think that's all for the um, filters. So once you have one of those filters installed or, or any other filter that you find, you'll be able to use it um, uh, through FFmpeg to, to, uh, to capture the screen and record it to a video. What you see right now on the screen this is the output of FFmpeg. Um, I'm rec I'm recording my screen with it at the moment, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and open a new command prompt. And the first thing you need to do is find out which direct show uh, capture sources are available to you, and FFmpeg has a command to do that. So you type in FFmpeg, and you would type in. Uh, dash list devices and true and the F switch which is format would be D show for direct show and input just put input dummy doesn't matter what you put input, input there as long as it isn't a real input and then it'll give you a, a list of what's available you get a list of direct show video devices and a list of direct show audio devices and you'll notice on mine that I have both U Screen Capture and Screen Capture Recorder installed. Under my audio devices, um, I'm going to want to use my microphone. And it's this first one right here. And you'll notice when I input it into FFmpeg, it's going to um, be exactly as it's seen here. Capitalization doesn't matter on Windows systems, so that's not important. But let's go ahead and get started. So we would put in the command FFmpeg. And you're probably, you probably there's a good chance you'll run into run into some buffer problems, buffer overflow, and if that happens, FFmpeg will will output a bunch of errors. You'll get dropped frames, and and your video will end up pretty choppy. And if so, if you run into that problem, um, you can change the real time buffer, the real time buffer size, and that would be through the um, RT buff size switch, and um, however much you think you need to use. Um, I'm going to set this to 1500 megabytes, it's a good chunk. At uh, recording at 720p, you'll probably want a, a pretty big buffer. 
And after that, we set the format with the F switch, and it'll be D show again for direct show. And now we give it our inputs. So, input for video. I'm going to use the U screen capture. Just as it is right here. Again, capitalization doesn't matter. And then, optionally, if you want to do audio, at the same time, you put a colon. Audio equals, and uh, I'm going to use my microphone, so I input it just as I see it there. Microphone real tech AC 97 audio. You'll notice there is no closing brace. I'll also, um, just an option, I don't think it really matters is uh, rather than putting the colon you can just put another input actually I think you have to put uh, format D show again then input audio but I think it's just easier to just put the, put the colon and here is where we want to declare our frame rate and I'm going to record this at 30 frames per second it's important to um, this is if, if, if you put if you declare the frame rate before your um, video and audio codecs, it's um, the, I guess it's called the input frame rate. What it is, it's, it's the, what it is, it's the, the frame rate that, that uh, U screen capture is going to be processing. So it's going to, U screen capture is going to run at 30 frames per second. And um, the encoder should automatically detect that and, and encode to uh, 30 frames per second. If I were to put it after the video encoder, um, U screen capture would just use whatever its default was, and the encoder would still um, encode to 30 frames per second. But if U screen capture was only doing 10 frames per second, um, you'd have a bunch of duplicate frames, uh, and it would be choppy. It would look it would look like the 10 frames per second. So I'm going to show you a few different uh, video codecs that um, that can be used to capture the screen. Some of them are lossless and some of them are lossy. Lossless just means that you don't lose any video quality while you're recording. Uh, the first lossless one I'm going to show you is um, is a Huff YUV. So we input the V codec switch or optionally C uh, colon V for video codec. Um, so for HuffYUV, you would just put in HuffYUV, and that's pretty much all. That, that's you, I don't think you need to put in any other options for HuffYUV. It's uncompressed and um, it uses iframes only, and um, that it's good in a way because um, using iframes m only makes it really easy to trim the video later if you want to cut out pieces which I really like, but um, encoding with Huff YUV at, at, um, at 720p is um, a bit of a stress on my system and I end up getting dropped frames. Um, an alternative to Huff YUV is the um, FFmpeg um, version of it, which is just called FFV Huff which is essentially the same. Supposedly it's supposed to be better, but I don't really uh, compare the two. Um, also, when you're encoding to FYUV, um, because it's uncompressed and it uses the iframes, the resulting video file is going to be quite large. So um, you would need plenty of space on your hard drive if you're doing a long video. Um, the next video codec is the lib x264 codec which is probably one of the most popular right now it encodes into h264 which is i think the most commonly used format on on the web and it's also the format that's used in in uh, blu-ray players it's um it, it does a very good job of of compressing video and and keeping good quality so it, it can be lossy but uh, you can tell it to encode losslessly. And to do that, you would either put in QP0 option or CRF0 option. 
I don't really know for sure what the differences are, but for some reason um, the FFF, FFmpeg documentation recommends using a QP option. I'm not sure why. Um, I do have a a tutorial written out about the written out on this, and it and it has a link to that recommendation, and I'll post the link uh, if you want to read more about that. Um, another option for this is um, so by default LibX 264 won't do um, just iframes; it'll it'll do um, iframes every once in a while. But if you do want to encode only iframes you can use the X264 opt switch and um, you would put uh, key int equals one if um, otherwise if you want to give it a larger if, if you want to have it more spread out you can uh, set the key integer to uh, something like 100 and then um, um, and then uh, you would also put minimum key int something like 80 whatever you want and I think it would uh, it would choose which frames to use as iframes or, or key frames uh, somewhere between 80 and 100 every 80 and 100 frames uh, and uh, lib, uh, the LibX264 encoder is the encoder I'm using uh, at this moment to encode this video. I uh, oh an another thing about the um, X264 opts if you do the um, key integer equals one, that puts more of a uh, a weight on the uh, puts more of a load on the processor and the system. So uh, by doing that, you're um, uh, you may have a gr bigger chance of, of uh, buffer overflow. So if you're having buffer, pro buffer overflow problems, you definitely don't don't want to uh, don't want to put that. If you don't put it, and you're still having buffer overflow problems, you may want to spread the the keyframe intervals um, a little wider. Okay. Let me check, make sure I haven't missed anything so far. The uh, the last encoder I think I'm going to show you is, um, is how to encode it with XVID. This is a lot. This is lossy compression, and um, it, it. But it may not if if you're having problems with buffer overflow or or um, or audio video sync with with the with the lossless codecs you, you may want to try this one it's it's older than um h264 but it it's still pretty good so um one option to do xvid is um there's an there's an encoder in FM, ffmpeg called lib xvid um but i prefer to use um the mpeg4 encoder and with the VTAG switch and set that to XVID. Now uh, you can't encode. You, no matter what, you're going to get um, a little bit of lossy. Com you're going to get loss, lossy compression. The video quality is not going to be not quite as good as as um, as with the um, H.264 or the Huff YUV, but you can get pretty close with this. Um, you just set uh let's see what would be v sync um oh it would be i'm sorry it's the video quant quantizer i believe it's called and um the uh, switch um it can either be q colon v or uh, q scale colon v it's the same thing and you set that to zero and that's going to give you the best quality available under xvid and it's pretty good quality. It's it you you probably not even really going to be able to to notice a difference. I, I noticed a little bit of difference in in colors, but I think that's just because um, XVID only supports um, 
uh, YUV420P where with the um, with the um, lossless encoders they're either using RGB or they're using uh, YUV444P so uh, okay I believe that's I believe that's all for the um, video encoder so now we can move on to the um, audio audio um, encoder so this would be a codec or C colon A and uh, some of the lossless um, audio encoders one is FLAC uh, for free lossless audio codec but I prefer um, PCM I, I prefer the PCM format uh, over that and the most common PCM format used is signed 16-bit Little Indian and the encoder for that would be PCM underscore S16 LE and oh the audio channels um, your your system probably processes the audio in stereo and so by default FFmpeg is probably going to output stereo audio but if you're recording from a microphone which is just a single audio input um, it's kind of pointless to have uh, stereo audio because both both left and right streams are going to have the exact same data so you can mix it down to mono and make the um, and make the um, make the file a little smaller and I think it also puts less of a load on the uh, on the encoder um, so you just put AC for audio channels and one that'll mix it down to mono and the audio rate I think FFmpeg usually the frequency is usually 44,100 um, which is which is a, a very common frequency um, which is what I'm, I'm going to use uh, but I'm going to uh, or, uh, declare it just to just to be safe And if you if you want to use a lossy compressor, um, if you want to do MP3 audio, you can do lib MP3 lame, which is a great uh, which is a great MP3 encoder. And um, you probably you want to set you probably want to set the bit rate. If you do that, 128k is usually what I do. I've seen people do uh, 196k is a is a common one. 320k is another common one. Um, the, the lower you go, the, uh, uh, the less quality you're going to have, but it, you're going to have a smaller file. If you want to, if you're doing the, um, if you're doing um, H.264 video, generally um, H.264 video uses AAC audio, which is the advanced advanced audio codec, and uh, that's that's what you'll find on the web too and on blu-ray players as well so if that's what you want um, uh, has a um, FFmpeg has a as an encoder uh, called libvo underscore AAC Inc and um, on according to the documentation um, it's not as good as some of the AAC encoders that come with FFmpeg but I've tried the other ones and they seem to be very buggy. This is the one that seems to work the best for me. So after this, um, if you're having... I've been having a lot of um, audio and video synchronization problems and um, where the audio is slower, it isn't recorded at the, at the right rate as the video, as the same rate as the video. And... Um, I've been. I, I I found that the the best option I found so far, I think, is to set the um, is to set the async option. And um, I'm gonna have to check my tutorial, but I think you're supposed to set it to uh, zero. Oh, I'm sorry you set the async to the same frame rate that your video is at so so because um, 
because I'm because I'm processing the frame rate at 30 frames per second. That's exactly what I want to put my async at is 30. And after that, we can give it our output file name. So I'm going to just call it out underscore video and the file name extension. So there's a few extensions you can use, and depending on the extension, um, that's the container that FFmpeg will output to. Um, one that's been around for a long time is AVI, which stands for Audio Video Interleaved. And it's a good container. It uh, holds quite a few formats. Um, if you're doing um, H.264 with AAC, AAC Audio, the most common container used for that is uh, MP4, which uh, stands for the MPEG-4 container, um, which is what you're going to find most uh, most web videos um, other than FLV. You're going to find them in the MPEG-4 container. It is quite limited, though. Um, I you can't um, you can't put PCM audio in it. I know that, and there's I think there's quite a few other formats that you can't use it for. It's pretty much made for um, H.264 and um, AAC, but I'm uh, I'm pretty sure um, MP3 works in it as well. Uh, FLAC maybe as well too. I'm not sure. Um, another an uh, another uh, container that's not very common that I I kind of like is the OGG container um, and it's a uh, the, the reason I like it is because it isn't it doesn't um, it's, it's not a proprietary format uh, it's not it's it's licensed for for completely free use uh, I'm trying to think of the the term um, patent. It's it's patent free. You don't have to worry about encroaching on anybody's patents by using it. Um, but it is kind of limited in in what types of uh, video and audio it can hold. It's it's made specifically for um, as if there's a the, the website that develops the OGG container is called ziff.org and they also have a codec a video codec and audio codec, and their video codec is Theora, and their audio codec is um, uh, Vorbis. They they may they may develop uh, the free lossless audio codec too. I'm not sure, but it's it's uh, pretty much made for um, Theora and and Vorbis. I I know Flack works well in it as well. Um, another container is MKV for the Matroska container format which is a really nice format. It's very versatile. It can hold all kinds of video and audio streams and lots of different subtitle streams as well. Um, though it doesn't seem to be used a whole lot on the web. Like I said, the MP4 format container is um, is the most popular one. MKV is also uh, patent free. So, and after that I would just hit enter and it would start recording. I'm not going to hit uh, I'm not going to run it though because uh, I'm worried about buffer. Um, I'm worried about my uh, my buffer running out and it screwing up my my video. But uh, that's it. I will post a link to the text tutorial.